Turkey's leader of 20 years has done it again. Recep Tayyip Erdogan magnanimously telling supporters to respect a result that forces a first ever runoff for president. But Erdogan's supporters can cheer. With 49.5% of Sunday's vote, the lead seems all but insurmountable. We'll ask why predictions underestimated fierce loyalty to Erdogan, particularly in conservative strongholds of the Islamist rooted AK party. What do the results say? about the direction Turkey seeks. Erdogan's voters shrugging off skyrocketing inflation, accu accusations of cronyism, corruption, the kind that led to the collapse of buildings in earthquake zones, and the steady jailing of opponents and journalists. They also stared down an opposition that managed to unite like never before, despite gains in major cities. And in parliament, not enough to win a majority. What can Kemal Kilic Dorolu do over the next two weeks to prove the pollsters wrong, today in the France 24 uh, debate, uh, we're looking at uh, the dust settling from Turkey's first round of presidential and legislative elections. With us from Istanbul, Selim Kunarap, former Turkish ambassador to the European Union. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, Denis Bakriacic is a sociologist. Uh, thank you for being with us. Thank you for inviting me. Yavuz Beydar is founder of the news website Free Turkish Press. How are you? Pleasure to meet you. Thank you. And from Ankara, France 24 correspondent uh, Jasper Mortimer. Uh, how, how are things, uh, Jasper? Well, many people are a little downhearted, if not dejected, today. We'll get, we'll get on to uh, uh, the, the mood where you are in the capital and elsewhere, the France 24 debate, where you can join the conversation you have on Facebook and Twitter, hashtag F24Debate. By the way, nearly 89% turnout. Turks wanted their voice to be heard. But it wasn't always a protest vote. Andrew Hillier explains. It wasn't quite the election night Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan had hoped for. But as he greeted a sea of supporters gathered at his AK party headquarters, the incumbent remained optimistic, despite the race heading for a runoff vote. If our nation has made its choice in favor of a second round, then that is also welcome. We strongly believe that we will continue to serve our nation for the next five years. As votes were being tallied, it was clear the incumbent had a comfortable lead, but he failed to hit the 50% threshold needed to win outright. These elections are the biggest challenge to Erdogan's 20-year-long rule in Turkey. And his opponent, Kemal Kilic Doroğlu, is hoping to keep up the pressure. The leader of a six-party alliance says he's ready to face a runoff, but cried foul over vote counting. <laughs> From the ballot boxes where our votes are high, they are blocking the system with repeated objections. What you are blocking is Turkey's will. Also vying for the presidency is Sinan Oğan. The candidate who is backed by the nationalist Ata Alliance party is trailing far behind his rivals. Who he decides to endorse in the possible next round could be critical. Dear friends, there will be another difficult 15 days ahead of us. At this time, we are not saying whether we'll support one party or the other. The runoff will take place on May 28th. Jasper Mortimer, why did the polls get it wrong? Francois, I think... Uh... I'm not sure. You know, no doubt the pollsters are doing a, a serious post-mortem about that question. Uh, but I think what happened is that the selection of people whom they polled was weighted too much in favor of voters in the cities rather than voters in the countryside. Kilic de Oulu won the three biggest cities in the land, Istanbul, Ankara and Izmir. I was very impressed that he won Ankara because this is a conservative town dominated by civil servants. But he did win it. Uh, however, 
uh, most of the population doesn't live in the biggest cities. Most of the population is out there. And Erdogan swept the countryside. Erdogan swept the countryside. Uh, uh, is that your reading of it, uh, Ambassador Kunarap? Yes, well, it, as, as Jasper said, it, clearly, uh, Mr. Kılıçdaroğlu has done better in the, in the large cities, which, incidentally, his party did also quite well uh, during the um, uh, municipal elections four years ago. As you know, Ankara and Istanbul, which have been controlled by um, uh, members of Mr. Erdogan's party, shifted uh, okay. the opposition okay. already four years ago. But, but clearly, you know, this was not enough uh, for uh, a win for Mr. Kılıçdaroğlu. And there are many reasons why uh, this happened. Perhaps we'll, we'll come in. To, uh, we'll What's come the to. main reason, you think? The main reason, I think, at the end of the day, is that identity politics uh, counts for more than performance. Uh, people voted for Mr. Erdogan not because he had done a particularly good job running the economy. I, nobody, I think, would be able to argue that. Uh, but because he represents a certain way of life, and, and people in Turkey, a majority of the people are conservative, uh, devoutly Muslim. And for them, uh, that identity mattered more uh, than uh, rising prices uh, uh, and, and uh, difficulties to make ends meet at the end of the month. Hey, the turnout uh, two points higher than last time in 2018, despite uh, the mass displacement of citizens after February's earthquakes. People wanted to vote. Some of the hardest hit areas by the earthquake did switch to the opposition, but others, one example, Gaziantep in the southeast, squarely went uh, for uh, the incumbent. Uh, Denise Bakriacic, do you agree uh, with uh, Selim Kunerap that in the end, um, Identity and uh, mattered more than issues over uh, uh, effectiveness. I think people are afraid. They are not ready to see that much change. They, even the conservative part, they're looking for a change. I think they want to see a better economy. That's for sure. But the most important thing, it became an immigration problem because Turkey, they don't need that much. Uh, immigrants in Turkey. They they were not looking for uh, workers. They are already in uh, unemployment. So, but they didn't really put the cause and the consequences together. They told Erdogan. I think they still paid the tribute to Erdogan. They don't see the AKP and the Erdogan together now, as we see uh, from the results. They want to protect their leader. Maybe after the polls. So you so you're saying that. The president is more popular than his party. Yes, I think so. They don't want to see the, um, the direct relationship between the party and the leader, what I think. They still uh, protect their leader. They don't want to put him down. Maybe the polls, they have some theories, like one of them is a shy Tory factor, like we saw in the, um, in the UK. Uh, early uh, 90s and also like very recently, that could be one of them. But I think mostly the data is lacking. That could be a problem for the poll side. And also, uh, I think they want to, when the, they saw the polls, they wanted to protect Erdogan maybe. Wanted to protect Erdogan. Yavuz yeah. Baydar. What is it about Recep Tayyip Erdogan? Again, as Mr. Ekman and, 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 and Denise was talking about it, this fear of change. As uh, Mr. Kunelov says, and as Denis pointed out, uh, I think we should see it through the optics of uh, cultural divides uh, in a form of culture camp that, that the, the, these elections may be about, more than you know, class struggle or, or perceptions on, on purely political level. But these identity politics questions, uh, not wearing the heads, as the, wearing the, head, the right to wear the headscarf, well, Turkey used to be staunchly secular and have s specific rules. Is, aren't these old battles? They're still being waged. They are still being waged, but I think most importantly, you know, post-earthquake Turkey or in period between showed us that there are mis misreadings and misconceptions from the perspective of Istanbul or big cities to the heartland Anatolia, 
small amounts of money or uh, distribution of wealth uh, on rural level or mid-scale towns level mean a lot more than people think from the perspectives of the urban areas. And I think people uh, mistakenly thought that a earthquake disaster, tragic as it is, would turn the people around against Erdogan himself, which didn't happen. Uh, soon the surveys in the two weeks in the aftermath of the elections showed that the, the electorate there, people living, inhabitants there in those regions, in provinces, started seeing culprits rather than Erdogan as municipalities or contractors or construction companies. And when Erdogan cunningly uh, and, uh, you know, you know, foxily uh, started investing on the, you know, building buildings in a very fast pace and, you know, giving, handing out keys to newly constructed houses in those areas, people uh, seem, seem to be content, uh, you know, on, and then seem to be clinging to, to Erdogan J as J the savior, you know. Jasper Mortimer touring polling stations on Sunday, speaking with uh, potential voters on the campaign trail. Uh, when you asked uh, citizens who they thought can get the job done, what did they answer? Well, Erdogan supporters said Erdogan, opposition supporters said we need change. But I, I want to endorse uh, what uh, Ambassador Kunal was saying about identity politics. I would prefer the term cultural politics, uh, which is close to what uh, Yawuz said when he talked about Kulturkampf. Um, I think this is what it's at. You know, when an Erdogan supporter declared himself to me, I would say, what about inflation, which is officially 44 percent, but uh, uh, by independent economy economists is 105 uh, percent. Now, the Erdogan supporters would say, you know, we don't care about that. Um, you know, we're not going to vote for somebody who's in league with the PKK or, you know, make political excuses like that. But then I spoke to one what I would call enlightened uh, voter who was voting for the opposition in the same conservative uh, lower middle class area of Ankara, Mamak. And she said to me, listen, most of the people here, they come from the villages. And what she meant was that their culture of conservative, traditional Islamic values meant far more to them uh, than anything else. Uh, and they saw, they see Erdogan as the embodiment of those values. And they do fear that those values, including wearing the headscarf uh, in public offices, uh, they do see those values would be threatened by somebody who would oust Erdogan and represent uh, the modern uh, um, secular, um, more democratic Turkey. And uh, the third, there's a third party candidate as well in this election, uh, Sinan o Owan. He has scored 5% of the vote. Um, he's a breakaway right wing nationalist. Uh, this Monday, he uh, told the opposition not to expect an endorsement if they don't reject uh, uh, the, uh, the pro Kurdish HDP party. Uh, no endorsement for either candidate from him, but already what sounds a lot like a prediction. I think we're heading to a runoff because the opposition is not giving enough confidence to voters. They're not able to reassure people that they can solve Turkey's problems. I'd say the opposition has been one of the most affected by the earthquakes. So uh, that sounds almost like uh, uh, he, 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 he didn't say, he said, I'm not endorsing uh, either side, uh, uh, Selim Kunalab, but he also said by the same breath, uh, he, he directed his criticism squarely at uh, the uh, uh, opposition. And uh, what's interesting to note uh, when voters pick their, their runoff candidate is uh, that in the, in, the new, in, the, in the vote for the legislative elections, where the breakdown was slightly different, we see uh, that uh, the uh, far right uh, a nationalist, MHP, and, a, and if you add the smaller far-right parties who won't be represented in Parliament, 
Well, they amount to 25 percent of Sunday's vote. Why did the nationalist far right and the far right in general, sometimes the Islamist far right, uh, f do so well, uh, Ambassador, in Sunday's poll? Well, that, that is, of course, one of the surprises of, of this uh, uh, first round, uh, that the opinion polls had not indicated that there would be this uh, major shift towards uh, conservative or nationalist uh, parties and, and uh, candidates. Uh, I'm not a soci sociologist, so I cannot really explain uh, why this happened. It was certainly very disappointing because it means that uh, the major problems of that Turkey encounters in the southeast uh, uh, with the, 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 the Kurdish population of the country and finding a, a peaceful and democratic solution uh, to uh, this problem will be rendered more difficult. Well, let me ask you the question differently, Ambassador. The alliance between the AKP of Recep Tayyip Erdogan and the MHP, is that... Um, uh, a, a cross-purposes alliance, or is that are they natural bedfellows? I think it's it's essentially a transactional relationship uh, of uh, two people who have uh, uh, come together to stay to maintain themselves uh, in power. I'm not sure that they, there is a, a great convergence of uh, points of view. At least there wasn't in the past. You know, when you look at how they treated each other. Uh, say six, seven, eight years ago, you can go back into the files and, and look at uh, the videos that were uh, made by either of them, where they spoke uh, of the other in in the fairly insulting uh, terms, and then they realised uh, that if they came together, they would be able to um, uh, stay in power forever, and and uh, uh, this is uh, this is what motivates them. Uh, and this happened after the 2015 election, uh, where you know, um, uh, the AKP had basically lost the first uh, one that was held in, in June uh, 2015. And then uh, President Erdogan uh, shifted uh, towards the, the nationalist uh, uh, vote and gave up any thought of uh, any attempt at finding a, 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 a negotiated or peaceful democratic solution uh, to the problems of the Southeast and, and has veered you know, towards nationalism. Uh, so this is all you know, rather transactional, you might say. Uh, Denise Bakriacic, why this, why this strong support for the far right on Sunday? I will say once again, they're afraid. But at the same time, there's an immigration problem in Turkey, but this is a real... The immigration problem being what? Syrian refugees? Syrian refugees, like uh, many other different countries coming to Turkey. And uh, at the beginning, we were people were thinking they were it was just a temporary period of time, but they are there and they are not going anywhere. And the major forces became a, a decisional uh, on the elections. I think that every time, okay, we had COVID, but everybody in the world there was a COVID problem everywhere. So it wasn't just only a fault to Erdogan. Again, like the war and the inflation, seem again it's not his fault. And there is only immigration now, uh, now who can be uh, now which can be a real problem for everybody in Turkey, like in different way from the left to the right side. And also, I think there is also when we think about the rural areas of uh, Turkey who's voting to Erdogan, this is also a theory from when we look uh, from this perspective of agriculture industry relation. Still, they are living under it, so which means hierarchy hierarchical societies, very patriarchal, uh, state nation is working. On the other side, there's Kılıçdaroğlu, inclusive uh, discourses, but it really means something to a uh, conservative part of Turkey. I don't think so. They don't, mostly they don't think uh, a must uh, gender equality. Are, are you suggesting that for, for, for these people, globalization and change are going too fast? Too fast to understand. I think that di very different uh, Turkey in different regions, even in the same regions, there are different Turkeys. Yavuz Baydar. Another explanation might be the core issue that lies deep in the, the indoctrination, uh, also the transformation of the state post 
attempted coup period in the past... After 2016. Seven, 2016, the past eight years, let's say. It's uh, shifted, it's changed the, the nature, the, the, the content of the state, the, you know, the, the, the cadres that uh, have been recruited by the AKP-MHB coalition alliance is uh, reflecting a, a doctrine called Turkish Islamic Synthesis which was initially uh, an invention by the military junta in the 1980s that has become far more real in the lives. And also it's reflecting what, what is intended in the educational system. Uh, this indoctrination is now making it possible, maybe not so surprising, that there is this flux between the, the Islamist AKP and the nationalist uh, MHP. And also, I would add, Wait, there's another... Ex explain that to me, because again, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit stumped about Well, that. Turkish Islamic synthesis is, is basically uh, uh, what uh, the claim is that, simply put, the true nature of, of, the, of the character of the Turkish Republic uh, is uh, both, uh, you know, strongly nationalistic, uh, Turkish nationalism, which has been you know, the red line or, the, you know, all across the Tur centennial of the hundred years of the Turkish history and also the, 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 you know, the Islam, which has been on the rise constantly ever since the early 1950s. And uh, the, the, you know, Cold War, of, of course, meant something for the military junta and against the, you know, threat of communism, the Islam, Turkish Islamic synthesis became a very popular um, concept mm. and uh, that has, that has always lied within the conservative segments of the of the Turkish uh, state and its cadres. But I would add also another element in this, which would explain, I think, uh, partly the shift towards the far right, uh, again uh, happening and continue will continue to be happening now in the future. I think as the AKP weakens, is the uh, PKK leadership in the lately, just two weeks, three weeks before the elections, becoming more and more and more vocal about openly supporting Kılıçdaroğlu uh, against the backdrop of indoctrination, anti-Kurdish sentiments pumped by Erdogan and Bahçeli, which might be, again, back to fear, which might have frightened these indoctrinized masses in Heartland and Anatolia to shift towards the MHB. So, Again, and the core issue remains the Kurdish issue uh, to be resolved, but it is with the presence of Sinan Oğan and uh, also Erdogan now, you know, being continuously hardliner, will be a core issue. And I think it's fair to predict that the Kurds or the Kurdish presence in parliament will be kept alienated from approaching a, a phase of. Uh, you know, um, uh, solution in terms of uh, you know, peaceful solution uh, between the Kurdish minority and the Turkish majority. So yeah. we are, you know, we are still faced with a lot of hardship ahead. I, I suppose. Yeah, the the, the this um, uh, the, the the Kurdish rooted HDP party, which uh, uh, comes in uh, with uh, a, a sixty, uh, I believe uh, it's rebranded, uh, uh, and it's got something like sixty-seven. 60. Maybe we should call up that, that graph again that shows us... 62. The, yeah. uh, 62, thank yeah. you. 62 seats in the upcoming uh, uh, parliament uh, and uh, whose leadership openly endorsed uh, the, uh, uh, this time the, the HDP. Opposition Daily, uh, Jum Hurriyet, headlining this Monday, Erdogan has lost. The argument that since he was forced into a runoff, that qualifies as a loss, a bit of uh, echo chamber thinking. Uh, but he is on the brink of a win, and his campaigning as defender of uh, Turkish values, as pointed out there by Yavuz, against the West uh, and the Kurdish military militants, the PKK, uh, rubbing off on many a voter like uh, morning commuters in Istanbul. Turkey preferred it to be like this. We wanted this. They messed around with the PKK and other things. Jasper Mortimer, that uh, endorsement for Kilic Darulu, the opposition candidate uh, from uh, the former HDP party, uh, it, it, did that backfire? Some people might argue that. I actually think it was a good thing 
uh, and it showed that Kilic Dooglu was serious about trying to tackle the Kurdish problem. Uh, and this is a problem that tends to be pushed to one side uh, come Turkish elections because of <laughs> its political ramifications. Uh, Look, initially, um, Kilic Dooglu held a meeting with the HDP leadership, after which the leadership said they wouldn't put forward a candidate for president. And that was seen as a sort of tacit endorsement of Kilic Dooglu. Then two or three weeks later, uh, they actually came out and fully endorsed uh, Kilic Dooglu. Um, now, in between those, uh, two statements. Um, Kilic Dooglu had um, filed a, a, a kitchen video. You know, he campaigned by shooting videos in his kitchen. Uh, and uh, in this kitchen video, he condemned the fact that uh, Kurds are often treated as terrorists in Turkey. And he made clear that if he became president, he would change that. Now, I think that was a good thing to say. Uh, and uh, you know, people who point to uh, Kilic Dooglu being in league with the PKK, uh, as Erdogan kept on telling them to do, you know, I'm not sure that they've just fallen for the Erdogan propaganda. I do think they're looking for excuses. And uh, I, I go back to what I said earlier. Uh, I think this was uh, an election where people feared that if Erdogan goes, then they will l lose their way of life. Uh, uh, a modern secular president would uh, threaten uh, their culture, which Erdogan has made respectable. Uh, you know, previously Turkey has been run by elites, uh, and the people from the villages have been looked down upon, uh, you know. Uh, uh, but Erdogan has made them mainstream. Uh, Selim uh, Kunalap, uh, uh, to win the Turkey's presidency these days, how do you handle the Turkish question? The, the Kurdish question? Yes. Well, um, uh, one would have expected uh, that the, the population would want a peaceful uh, settlement, a conciliatory uh, arrangement where you know, uh, uh, the plurality uh, of the nation would be uh, recognized. Uh, but it seems that the Turkish uh, nation is not interested uh, in that. We saw that in the uh, elections of uh, June 2015 which were uh, basically lost you know, by the AKP, because it was accused at that time, including by the MHP, of uh, engaging in a dialogue with the uh, uh, representatives of the, of the Kurds and uh, weakening the integrity of the state and that kind of thing. So uh, people voted against uh, these uh, efforts at, at finding a solution to the problem. So, and, and this is happening again, uh, as Jasper has indicated, you know, the, uh, and others also, that the, uh, in, in, the, in the period ahead of the, the first round of the elections, uh, uh, Erdogan has made quite a lot of uh, the links between HDP, uh, uh, or at least the tacit support of the HDP uh, for Mr. Kılıçdaroğlu. And, and this seems to have had a um, a good response among the uh, electorate, which is a bit disappointing because it shows that it's going to be very difficult uh, to find a solution to the problem. So in, to answer your question, if you want to be elected, uh, you have to take a, a hard line on the, on the Kurdish question, and, and, and that is rather disappointing, I have to say. Denise Bakriacic, you agree? Partially, yes, I do. I mean... Uh... Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Uh, there is lots of things to say, but I think that's not. People can easily change their mind if the things are not doing well on the left side. But if there is something wrong, I think during the um, the right wing ruling, it is really hard to change their ideas. Same for the thing. Same thing for the campaigns. There were some uh, videos, deep fake videos, 
and they believe in that. But normally, if it was the same thing did by Kılıçdaroğlu, it was it won't be the case. I think not just the subject, but the way how the people see and um, have perceived the things. It's quite difficult to uh, change. They have the self-esteem with the Erdogan. They don't need higher diplomas to find a job. What I see in society, like they don't need um, good qualifications. They can be, uh, they can have some sort of relationship with the families um, through social connections, and they can still have a good positions and can keep their positions in the society. And so, if it was the Kılıçdaroğlu, not the, their life, lifestyle. I don't think they were. Um, they are afraid for their lifestyle. It's not the case, but they are afraid for uh, social ranking in the society, social status. Let's take a look at some of the um, international uh, reactions. Uh, the uh, U.S. president uh, saying that uh, he's looking forward to working with whoever wins uh, Turkey's uh, uh, election. Uh, the high turnout on Sunday worthy of... Um, Three cheers from Brussels. It's a very clear sign that the Turkish people are committed to ex exercising their democratic rights to go and vote and that they value the democratic institutions. This is a big, big win of yesterday. Big, big win of yesterday. Your reaction when you listen to Ursula von der Leyen? Well, uh, that is the uh, playbook response. Uh, Always uh, the EU or international actors are emphasizing this, uh, that the ballot box remaining, of course, the only possible tool for a change in Turkey other than anything else, uh, because the rule of law has collapsed, separation of powers are gone, the exercise of rights and freedoms are, have vanished to a great deal. So for the Turkish people, Turkish citizenry, it is the only way to cast a verdict on the, you know, whatever government, whatever administration is there. So uh, it's therefore important that the, the, the underlining of, of, of this exercise is, is to be commended. But uh, still, uh, the big question will be arriving if the second round ends again with lots of protests from the opposition in case, uh, whether or not the EU, USA, all the allies, uh, how they will react. Will they immediately acknowledge the result or uh, will they delay or will there be other uh, reactions? Uh, there were very few monitors of the election process in Turkey, internationally speaking. So uh, I think that will be a bigger question to, to, to monitor and address. Can, can they afford to react when they need Turkey right now, for instance, to broker a grain deal between Russia and Ukraine? when there's this deal with the EU not to let migrants in, uh, when Turkey right now is being conciliatory in a general thaw in relations with the wider Middle East? Uh, I think the West uh, seems uh, quite content with the continuity. Uh, and as, as I think it's summarized in the, in the Biden's initial reactions today, I think he said, whoever wins is okay, uh, more or less. Jasper Mortimer, you heard Yavuz there talking about uh, 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 election observers. What did they say about Sunday's vote? Well, I've, uh, I was at their press conference today and I wanted to read you one paragraph which came from the representative of the, the head of the uh, Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe delegation. His name was Frank Schwaber. He said, Turkish democracy is proving to be amazingly resilient. They were referring there to the turnout of 89%. How many countries in the world have an election turnout of 89%? He continued, this election had a high turnout and offered a real choice. However, Turkey does not fulfill the basic principles for holding democratic elections. Key political and social figures are in prison. He was referring there to Salatin Demirtas, the former leader of the HDP party, who has been in power uh, since uh, November 2017. And the European Court of Human Rights uh, in Strasbourg has called for his release. Uh, right, sorry. 
Key political and social figures are in prison, even after judgments of the European Court of Human Rights. Media freedom is severely restricted, and there is a climate of self-censorship. Turkey is a long way from creating fair election campaign conditions. Uh, Selim Kunarap, your, your reaction to that, particularly because you're in Istanbul where the mayor, uh, Ikram Imamoglu, who uh, arguably was more uh, popular to many, uh, in the end was not the chosen candidate of that coalition for fear uh, that uh, he would be uh, thrown in jail. That was the, um, uh, the uh, about reason for not putting him forward as a, as a candidate. And you know that, of course, the HDP could not put forward uh, candidates in its name uh, because many of them were threatened with uh, uh, prosecution. Uh, their immunity uh, being lifted, and, and there was the risk uh, also that the party would be closed down uh, uh, because there's a, there's a sort of a, uh, a legal process uh, going on against it, and, and there, the, the risk, there was a very serious risk that uh, the party would be closed down in the middle of the election campaign, and uh, its candidates would be banned uh, from uh, uh, the election. And that is why you know, the uh, HDP, at the practically the last minute, shortly before the election campaign uh, started, created this new political party, uh, Green uh, Left, uh, with practically all of the candidates uh, being new, uh, and, and some of them also new to politics. Uh, so that put them at a great dis disadvantage. Uh, and and uh, uh, clearly, I mean, the, the election was certainly free. There was no interference uh, in the voting or anywhere. I haven't heard of any in major incidents of that sort. Uh, but you cannot argue that it was conducted in a fair manner. Uh, the authorities have a, a full control of the media. You know, Mr. Erdogan came out on television a couple of days uh, before the vote. and. Uh, his uh, uh, broadcast uh, was, was uh, relayed live on 18 separate channels, most of them private, all at the same time. Uh, and uh, so there were only three or four chan channels that did not broadcast uh, his uh, uh, speech. Uh, so, so that also is a sign uh, of uh, you know how how the uh, campaign was conducted uh, by the uh, administration. Um, it's, a bit, it's a bit disappointing, and, and it certainly is not really what you would expect in a, in a well-functioning uh, rules-based democracy. Denise Bakriacic, uh, people factored it in. The fact, OK, most TV belongs to uh, people who are sympathetic or loyal to uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, and they just go elsewhere for their news. Yes. and. He has all all the power on the institutions, on media, that's for sure. And uh, social media, I think there is a huge problem with this algorithms, because every time that you like uh, something, we see the, again the same type of the. And it's the echo chambers. Yes. Which, by the way, works both ways. Since there are a lot of people waking up this morning in Turkey thinking, how come Kilic Karolu <laughs> didn't win? Uh, my Twitter feed tells me it was a sure thing. <laughs> Don't me ask about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a real problem. Speaking of Twitter, on election eve, uh, it put out a statement saying it was restricting access inside Turkey when that was flagged by U.S. media journalist Matthew Iglesias. As Twitter's boss himself responded, did, quote, your brain fall out of your head, Iglesias, said Elon Musk. The choice is to have Twitter throttled in its entirety or limit access to some tweets. Which one? Uh, do you uh, want? Uh, I mean, I'm not sure this is what swung the election, uh, but Yavuz Baydar, your, your, your reaction to the fact that Twitter effectively decided to self-censor? Well, uh, that's, I think, the most vital part of the media scene in Turkey that was until the, until the elections. And uh, those uh, Twitter accounts that were banned were th those about uh, corruption, and uh, also uh, some entering into the private Were they life. banned or just suspended? So, well, I think both. Right. Well, what, whichever. Uh, they, they, they were, some of them were, some of them were banned in Turkish domain, 
but they were available, accessible uh, outside Turkey. Uh, some of those those accounts. Uh, that was the process, and um, so th those were. Uh, but again, uh, this echo chamber thing, as it was very clear, it was uh, giving a lot of. Um, uh, optical flaws to, to people who have followed, were active in it, were following it. They thought, again, exactly as you said, uh, how come Klishterol didn't win? Because uh, it was sort of like, you know, self-feeding. People were uh, from mainly from urban areas, big cities, mainly young generations, well off, and uh, they were staunchly anti-Erdogan, anti-government. And uh, they fed each other. And they uh, reflected on it as if it, 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 it was you know, representative of the entire Turkey. And there's a deep Anatolian heartland which has very little to do. Again, the cultural divides, very, very fault lines were there. And that, I think, led to a great disappointment the day after. Uh, people woke up to the, another reality, which is the real reality, because Turkey is composed of 81 provinces, very many different identities split into three secular West uh, and uh, Anatolian heartland, conservative and the Kurdish provinces. And these three identities, the fault lines or walls between them remained, and social media didn't really reflect that because many of the followers or, or supporters of the AKP MHP, uh, we know by, by, by the statistics that they, they use may, perhaps Facebook. They, otherwise, they are less, far less interested in, in using internet. And they only get their news from TV. TV mm. is the main thing. According to UNESCO figures, 86% of the Turkish uh, public get only news and comment from TV. That's why it was very important for Erdogan to control the TV domain rather than newspapers or, or other conventional media outlets. And uh, this worked well, as, as Mr. Kunelab said. The, the, you know, asymmetrical thing. And also, in addition to that, you know, there is no public broadcaster in Turkey. There is a state broadcaster in Turkey, which is a big difference. And 48 hours of broadcasting uh, of, by Erdogan, as opposed to 40, 35 minutes, some by for Kılıçdaroğlu. So, Very asymmetrical. Salim uh, Kunerap, uh, it, it's uh, you know, a, an incumbent who's half a percentage point away from victory, a third-party candidate who's. Uh, not endorsed him, but blasted his opponent. So if you're uh, Kemal Kilic Dorolu, how do you make the best use of the two weeks to come? I think he has a very difficult task ahead of him. Uh, to my mind, you know, he would need a miracle uh, to win the, 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 the second round. He has lots of handicaps uh, that, that he faces. One, and, and the major one, I suppose, is the fact that uh, the uh, uh, administration, the ruling coalition, let's say AKP and MHP, already have a majority in parliament, three, 322 or something like that. Uh, his uh, grouping doesn't, of course, uh, uh, come even, uh, it doesn't even come near uh, anything like that. And even uh, uh, the, uh, if he wins, the, if he were to win the, uh, the second round, uh, he would not be able to govern uh, because he wouldn't have uh, the ability to get laws adopted by parliament and, and, and so on. And this is going to count against him, uh, it seems to me. Mr. Erdogan is going to make a lot of, uh, of, of that difficulty and, and people will simply not want uh, chaos uh, emerging uh, from the uh, second round. Uh, and then, of course, you have this, uh, what you mentioned, that uh, Sinan Rouhan is, uh, from his, um, uh, the, the nature of his grouping, of his party, or the, of his supporters, let's say, uh, is more likely to, to, to support uh, uh, President Erdogan than, than uh, Mr. Kulish Darulu. He's already said uh, things that are quite unacceptable uh, to Kulish Darulu for the second round. So, seems to me that uh, it's a done deal uh, and that uh, there's not very much that Kılıçdaroğlu can do to overturn the situation in the next two weeks. We're out of time, Denise Bakriacic, but what, what does the opposition candidate do? Does he 
take the high road and stick to what his principles were? Or does he try to throw the kitchen sink at Erdogan? And you were suggesting earlier that the, he wasn't... Out of the kitchen, maybe. That, 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 he was, that, he, that he wasn't ruthless enough, maybe. Or that yeah, I think he can be now a bit more decisive, patri not patriarchal, but more strong leader image, a bit. More strong leader image. Uh, I want to thank you so much for joining us. I want to thank uh, uh, as well uh, Yavuz Baydar, uh, Selim Kunerlap in uh, Istanbul, our correspondent Jasper Mortimer in Ankara. Thank you for being with us here in the France 24 debate.